How's it going guys? Alex back here again. Good to see you. It's been a bit of a break. You guys saw lots of tutorials, lots of practice materials we've been putting out. So today I want to get right back into it. I want to give you the strategies, the precise, you know, hands-on tactics, techniques and so on. So I've been getting a lot of messages, our channel, our Facebook page, our Instagram, Shan, Usman, everybody were getting bombarded. Most of you guys tend to struggle in the listening section the most. So there's students have taken the exam countless times and they tend to pass reading you know, you practice enough material, you get to know the reading. Speaking, pretty much everybody's getting 19 speaking. Writing is not that hard, but listening is the big problem. So today I want to address the two most important, or some of the most important questions that people usually struggle with. So one of them is summarized spoken text, which are coming in your listening section. And the other one, of course, retail lecture. So this is the one that also contributes marks in the listening section, despite giving, being uh, in the speaking section, the first section of your exam. So let's get right into it. So what I notice a lot of times people struggle with, they struggle with taking notes. And whenever the audio is really easy, the audio goes on for two minutes and you know the accent is like British or American or Canadian, you usually don't struggle with it. But I want to focus specifically on the tough audios, the hard audios, the ones that you have no idea what they're saying, you cannot catch the meaning, and you're stuck there staring at the ceiling, you know, praying to God that he's going to help you, but it doesn't work. So you guys still need to perform. It's your final exam. You paid a lot of money for it. So let's get right into it. So I'm going to show you with two specific examples with two different audios. The first one is going to be quite slow. And just to make it easier, because it's hard on the board to see the notes, I'm going to type them. So I'm going to go at a slower speed. So first audio is going to be fairly straightforward. This is the most common way to take notes, where you catch phrases. Okay, so just pay attention. I'm going to play the audio, and I'm going to take the notes as I go along the way. Okay, so here's the first audio. It's about the novelist, The Secret Life of Bees. Uh, it comes repeated quite a bit in both retail lecture and summarized spoken text. So here we go. I had been writing nonfiction for years, actually, and but secretly wanting to be a novelist. When I first started writing at the age of 30, it was with the intention of writing fiction. But I took a little detour um, for 10 or 12 years and wrote nonfiction, which I have absolutely no regret about at all. I think it was exactly the right thing for me to do. But there was that dream tucked away inside of me to do this. And I remember reading something that Eudora Welty wrote, who is, you know, the great novelist from Mississippi who had a big influence on me, actually. She said, no art ever came out of not risking your neck. And I think she's absolutely right about that. So if you can't catch the whole sentence, you wait for the next the time. part. And it actually feels that way to me every time I sit down to write something. Finally, in the early 90s, I took my deep breath and started writing fiction. It felt risky to me at the time to do that. And one of the very first things that I wrote was what I thought was going to be the first chapter of a novel called The Secret Life of Bees. I wrote it in 1992, and it is actually essentially the first chapter of the novel as it is now. Okay. So obviously I'm not going to go through the format and how to do it in depth. I just want to give you guys an idea. So if, let's say, I'm doing summarized spoken text, so grammar is really, really important for summarized spoken text, my job is halfway done because I'm catching almost entire sentences. I can just combine them into one sentence. So I'm not following any format. Just to give you guys a rough example, I can mention that the lecture was about writing nonfiction for years, but the lady was wanting to be a novelist. Uh, the author or the novelist started writing at the age of 30, but then she took a little detour, and she would have no regret about it. Uh, furthermore, the uh, audio also discussed that she had this dream tucked away inside, um, and this part maybe I cannot connect. So maybe, um, and she feels that way every time she would see, to sit down to write something. And in conclusion, she started writing fiction and wrote the first chapter of the novel in 1992, which was essentially the first chapter as it is today. That's your whole summary. So you see, I did it really quickly, and it doesn't take a lot of thinking because I can just add little connectors in between and make it grammatically correct. Now I'm going to play another audio. And it doesn't matter how smart you are, it doesn't matter how clever you are, doesn't matter how good your English is, doesn't matter how good your listening skill is, I promise you, you will not be able to do it the same way and make logical sense of it. So for this one, typically I would do it on the board. 
I will try initially to take the notes the same way as I took previously, but it's not going to work because the audio is too fast and obviously I've heard it dozens of times. But if it's your first time taking the exam and you've never heard this audio before, you're going to be shocked. So I'll play it. So watch. I'll try to do it again in phrases, but the guy talks way too fast. So here's what I'm going to do. Watch. And this illustration often used is the one of the monkeys at the typewriter. Okay, so we have a monkey sitting at a typewriter and the claim here is basically if you leave chance and time long enough, you will get life. Don't worry about it. Yes, it's strange. Yes, it's wonderful. But leave enough matter 600 million years on Earth and you will have life. So the monkey sitting at the typewriter, the chances are eventually he produces the complete works of Shakespeare, so what's the problem? But he doesn't manage to do it in 600 million years. So what I decided to do to run the numbers is I, instead of saying type the complete works of Shakespeare, I just ran the numbers for how long would it take a monkey typing a one keystroke a second to type to be or not to be, that is the question, right? On average, how long is it going to take my monkey friend in one keystroke a second? I don't know how long you think that would be. Maybe you could have a guess. Would it be less or more than 600 million years, which is the period life on Earth is supposed to have emerged within? And when I run the numbers, to be or not to be, that is the question, takes 12.6 trillion, 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 trillion years to type just that phrase. And a DNA stream that had complexity emerged by chance undirected within 600 million years. Again, it's mathematically possible, but it's so incredibly unlikely that it would have that it tilts me in favor of the Christian story in which God creating life is simply a question of saying, let there be, and there was. Okay, so here you guys see, I try to get clusters of words, I try to get phrases, but the audio is really hard. So you cannot close your eyes and pray to God. You cannot hope for the best because if you don't get enough keywords, whether it's retail lecture or summarize spoken text, you guys will probably fail the listening section. You won't have enough content. So here's what we're going to do. I try to get groups, but whenever I fail to do so, I just get individual words because if I'm doing the summarize spoken text, for example, I got more than enough time to make that logical connection. So I can say the lecture was discussing about the illustration that described the monkey sitting and which was strange and wonderful. Uh, it also mentioned that in 600 million years he produces Shakespeare and he would type and it would take a long time to, to write to be or not to be. Furthermore, he also discussed that it actually takes 600 million years. Uh, instead of that, it takes 12.6 trillion years. And in conclusion, that uh, DNA has high complexity, which is mathematically possible, and the author prefers to favor the Christian story. So again, I did like a really la a rough copy and obviously the logical meaning there is lost a little bit, but I'm just giving you guys an example that even though you cannot get full phrases, the computer is looking for the keywords. So as long as you get enough keywords and you make it grammatically correct, you will get your marks. So you cannot, again, close your eyes. You cannot hope for the best. You cannot pray during the exam. It won't help you. So if you see in the first five to 10 seconds, the audio is way too fast. It's way too difficult. You start taking notes this way rather than writing full phrases. So guys, best of luck. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, I'm a little bit out of practice. Today's video was a little bit rough. Even Justin is laughing that I'm doing a terrible job, but hopefully this was still helpful. Leave your comments below, like, subscribe, and watch the other videos as well. We've been putting a lot of practice materials, a lot of free resources. So I hope to see you guys soon. Gonna start doing this a little bit more often again and chat soon. See you later.